Ooh, a little tired this morning. Every now and then I'll take something to help me sleep. Prescribed by my doctor, of course. And uh, I have a hard time waking up sometimes. I'm a little silver display right here. Little gun, a little more silver, a little more silver, and a little bit more silver. Good morning, folks. I haven't seen you all in a long while. Thank you for tuning in on this Friday morning. One thing I always like to say to everybody, out of everything we own, and that includes money and silver, free time is our rarest commodity. It is what we have so little of, and we're demanded to share it amongst all our family and whatnot. And I just want to thank you for tuning in and sharing some of that rare commodity with me. Um, thank you so much. Let me adjust the camera. I, re I realize um, how, how blessed I am. A little coffee in the morning. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so, um, Nick Miller, my vacation actually just started yesterday night. And I don't have to return to work till the 8th of January. And I get paid for almost all that time, which is awesome. So very happy to hear that. Little news, little uh, disheartening news. I don't know if you remember the elections. Roy Moore, Judge Roy Moore. Democrat operatives created fake Russian bots that were designed to attach themselves to Republican Roy Moore's Twitter accounts, his Facebook accounts, so it appeared as though Roy Moore, this conservative, had all these Russian connections. They were just created with a computer. Yeah. And guess what? It was considered a, uh, a false flag operation by the Democratic Party. It's just coming out now. So I made a video. It must have been two years ago where I said Google <coughs> had the power to manipulate and change the course of America. That video, because it was so far back, two, three, possibly even four years. That video might have gotten 100 views. Didn't get very, very, very many views at all because I don't think people were really seeing the full capacity, the full power of Google, Facebook, Twitter, and all these other big companies. They, have the ch the, they, ha they can change the future. All they need to do is manipulate minds, sway, put doubt, put fear in a mind, and then they can sway it to go with any direction they want. Let me pull up a news article real quick. And this is, before you all beat me up and say, oh, this is a... Um, this is a Fox News report. We can't we can't believe it. The New York Times, folks, is breaking the story. Not that it's not being uh, reported on all channels. New York Times has published a shocking new story claiming it made contact with a group of Democratic tech experts who worked for some important Democratic uh, politicians who they say experimented with Russian style tactics online during the 2017 special election between Doug Jones and Roy Moore. The New York Times found no evidence that Jones campaign was aware of the groups or sanctioned them. Basically, you, they're claiming that judge I'm sorry, they're claiming that Doug Jones didn't know anything about it. 
The group claims it infiltrated social media sites posing as conservative Alabamians because it was this uh, this did take place in Alabama. This uh, this campaign. While there, they tried to amplify am anti more stories and pushed conservatives to support write-in campaigns for another candidate instead. So what they'll do is they'll, they'll, they'll convince the masses, the dumbed down sheep, hey, we know you're a conservative, but this conservative ain't good enough for you. Put your vote in that conservative. Knowing very well that that one has no chance in hell in winning or knowing very well that one will back out at the very end. Moore's campaign manager, Rich Hobson, told the state, told the Times, I need more coffee, that the Moore team had suspicious suspicions and had something off and that something was off happening online, but they couldn't find any hard evidence. What had happened was, and I'm not going to read this whole article. I just wanted to get you the gist of it. Mr. Roy Moore would go on his various social media sites. And, and, and very much like me, there is really never a trend of who joins my site. It could be a he, it could be a she, it could be somebody from Sweden, Australia, it could be somebody from Mexico. But he had a rash of of Russian subscribers, just a total blackout of Russian subscribers on all his sites. And he found it very suspicious. And then the news media outlets, who were also involved, picked up on it and responded over the airwaves, pushing the propaganda, hey, this Roy Moore is connected to Russians. And remember, this is when the whole Russian collusion thing was going on. Russia was hot. Everybody was believing Russia had something to do with it. Hey, Russia, Russia, Russia. That's what's going on here, folks. They're actually using the internet to create fake people, as well as real people who get into your um, accounts and just start saying negative things, incorrectly, incorrectly stated, uh, mal, uh, no factual uh, component behind them. Um, and, uh, you know, I can't remember whether <coughs> this group had a, you know, $100,000 budget to just go and just rip Roy Moore apart. Uh, so you can bet that's just not happening with Roy Moore. It's happening with everybody. Uh, I think um, I hate this. I hate to sound, and I'm going to stop talking about news and, and and start chatting with you in a minute. But I hate to say this and sound like a retard. We almost need to stop listening to. Um, we need to start listening to our heart. Use the force, Luke. You know, when you see something, your intuition is going to guide you. Um, but uh, when you see somebody that's all of a sudden been bombarded with Russian hacks and whatnot, Russian bots or Russian people. You know, it, you got to be suspicious. You really, you really do. Um, so I can't even remember whether Roy Moore won or not. Let me take a quick look. I heard that the election was really, really close. Roy Moore. I'm wondering what the outcome of that was. I just type in Roy Moore and, and just it's bombarded. Democratic operatives create fake Russian bots designed to link Kremlin to Roy Moore in Alabama race. I, I you can't it's all over the internet now. It just broke like a day or two. Um, and I have no doubt, I have no freaking doubt it's happening to everybody. And and we, we often go around our circles, and our circles can be at work, it can be wherever we might go. And it is amazing how when we talk to people, their political views are uh, aligned with ours, you know? Um, and it's not that we're seeking these people out. 
It's, it's not that we're seeking these people out. I think I think most of the people in the United States really do think the way we want. They say 70, 80 percent of the people want to build the wall. But the news media outlets will have you believe it's 50 50 in this country. Or it's 50 50 that's conservative and liberal. And you ever notice how all the races, they're 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 won by a, a split hair. 49, 51, you know, 50, you know, it's never 50 50. It's always 49, 51, 48, 52. Oh, you almost got it this time, folks. Better luck next time. Um, bo bottom line is, go with your heart, and um, I'll get off the tirade. Uh, just check out some news articles about this. This is big, folks. This is election fraud at its biggest. It really is. This is not opposition research and laying out factual statements about your opponents. This is literally making up a story to defame some your opponent. This is election fraud. This is election hacking. This is what the Democrats are trying to accuse Donald Trump of doing. I always notice this every time the Democrats or liberals accuse a Republican of something, you can rest assured it is a act of diffusion, meaning that they're really doing it and they're trying to deflect anybody from looking at them. When a Democrat says you farted, you can rest assured it was them who farted. Let's take a look at... Uh, I didn't even go on to look who won that election. If anybody knows, would you please type it uh, Type it in, please? Oh, and if you can find out the margin. I heard the margin was only off by 19,000. It was something like, uh, it was like 60,519 to 60,500. I mean, that's how close this manipulation worked and almost stole the election. So if somebody would, please just look up the, the, the Jones-Moore election, see the outcome of it, see who won, post it here in the chat room. I'm curious because our elections are slowly being stolen from us. They truly are. And, and it's not like in the movies. It is not like hacking into, like, you know, it's not like a Tom Cruise movie where they're actually hacking into voting machines or nothing. They're, they're not, folks. First of all, there's too many voting machines. Just in your county, how many voting machines are there? They would have to literally hack into every one of them across the entire nation to succeed in stealing the elections that way. No, no, folks. It is much easier to hack into our minds and fool us with propaganda and lies. I apologize about going on a rant. Happy Friday morning. I just made me some awesome coffee. <clears throat> made me a nice latte, four shot latte, may I add. <sighs> I'm not drinking Starbucks. Sans pure troublemaker propaganda. You're a Russian bot. I'm just teasing. It's not Starbucks. There is a place here in Tucson. Seriously, there's a place here in Tucson called Tucson Roasters. You're okay, Sans pure. There's a place here in Tucson. There's actually two locations. It's called Tucson Roasters. And they just get beans from various locales. And, um, <clears throat> and they roast them. This one is a Peruvian bean, and uh, I'm quite enjoying it. It's got that milk chocolatey undertones to it, um, dark. I'm not into the citrusy flavors here, and I don't know if anybody's into coffee or espresso. Espresso. But some of it very sour and citrusy. I'm not into that. I'm more into to the chocolates and whatnot. 
Rooster Cogburn here in the house. Thank you so much for um, thank you so much for being my moderator. Appreciate it. Been doing a great job. Um, one thing about a, a good moderator, you you know you have a good moderator in the house, and you really never hear from them. You never hear them. You never, you know, uh, you know it, it's a good thing. Um, so yeah, for my someone's asking me what I'm doing for the holidays. So um, today is my day off. I don't have to return to work till the eighth. During that interim, I plan on doing a lot of videos, but in about an hour. I leave for the White Mountains and I stay there for the entire duration, those two and a half, three weeks. On my way out of town, I'm stopping by the Honey Baked Ham store, buy me a big Honey Baked Ham, putting it in a refrigerated type of bag, and I'm taking it up there for my lovely wife and us to eat. I'm also going to stop and buy a damn nice bottle of wine to open up during Christmas. Might get a petite Syrah, something that warms the blood, something that feels good going down. Um, maybe even a bottle of Baccio Divino. Um, yeah, I'm going to do a couple of live streams up there um, and whatnot. I'll probably do a, um, you know, I just, you know, I do it every year, a, a, a Merry Christmas video. I just sit in front of the Christmas tree um, and whatnot. But uh, I'm just going to try to relax, recoup the mind. As you folks know, and I hate to repeat it, I had a heart attack, actually three of them, in August. And my doctor still says I'm not quite there. You know, So I'm going to take that time, because I haven't had that much time, to just pump in some vitamins, pump in some rest, read the news, uh, regurgitate the news back to you, um, that sort of thing. I want to talk about silver. And some of the coins I've uh, collected in the past um, when I'm up there. I want everybody to start stacking some silver, folks. God bless America. God bless our children. God bless our spouses. And so all it's about. It's we're never gonna get rich. This is not a this is not a lottery ticket. And everybody keeps accusing me of misusing accidentally misusing the wrong word investment but it's not investment you can't use it. i can use it whatever word i want it's a better investment than the dollar <laughs> okay regardless of whether this is an investment or not it's still better investment than the dollar you know i always tell people by the way if i can get a thumbs up i really appreciate it and i know you folks who tune into me at nighttime i've heard this a hundred times before but in my defense, I've never gotten on live chat at 8.30 in the morning before. So I know I got some people here in this room that I have not heard this before. So I would like to repeat it. One dollar says it right there. One dollar. Right on the bottom if you can't see, if you think I'm lying. One dollar. One dollar. <coughs> Silver Eagle. We get it to focus. One dollar lower your left hand corner. One dollar. One dollar. Both one dollar. As far as purchasing power, this does you can't purchase a dollar's worth of goods with this. As a matter of fact, the value of this is constantly falling. From the day it was created, it has fallen. Maybe a fraction of a cent here and there. But there is absolutely no chance that this is going to skyrocket and have the purchasing power of, let's say, $2, $3. You could put all you want in the bank of these. At best case scenario, its purchasing power will remain the same. I said best case scenario, folks. I didn't say it was going to happen. At best case, this purchasing power will remain the same for 30, 40 years until you retire. And there it is. Boom, 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 boom. But it ain't. 30, 40 years, purchasing power of this will fall. Purchasing power of this has a chance, at least, has a chance of going up. How? Because silver can go up. Chances of this silver 
can increase. I have a better chance with this in Vegas odds, in Vegas terminology. I have a better chance with that. I can get all kinds of pats on the back if I have a million of these in the bank. Oh, oh, tax man, you're the man. Can I borrow 20 bucks? You're the man. You tell somebody you have a few hundred of these, they look at you like you're a little child collecting baseball cards. Folks, you have a chance with this. That's all I'm saying. Whether it's an investment or not, I don't want to get into a pissing contest. This is the better deal. This is this is real money. This goes back to the Old Testament of the Bible. It's called silver and gold for that matter. I urge everybody to start stacking it. I got a feeling there is going to be a market crash. I never pumped that idea before, but I'm hearing all kinds of things in the news now how they are really afraid of Trump getting his second term and they will freaking burn this nation down to prevent that. See, it's not about what is best for the people. It never has been about what is best for the people. It has never been about what is best for the economy. You got to understand there's two bubbles, the bubble that we live in and the bubble that they live in. What it's always been about is the bubble they live in. They create an environment where their bubble is always prosperous. And they utilize promises that our bubble will get prosperous in order to make their bubble better. What I'm saying is Washington, they live in their own bubble, their own cocoon. How, how multimillionaires can claim that they're representing you when they've never even freaking gone through a checkout line or registered line in their lives. They're like drug dealers. They keep you dependent like a drug dealer. <clears throat> Throw a little crumb here, a little crumb there. And then you come back for more. Hey, you got any more? You got any more of that crack? Hey, man, that shit was good last time. Let me get a little bit more. Yeah, don't worry. I'll come. I'll keep coming back to you, man. You're you're my main connection. That's how it works. You ever notice that no matter how bad the economy gets, they never have to sell a home. They never have to go to the pawn shop. They never have to sell a car. No, the economy does not affect them. The economy really <clears throat> only lives in our bubble. The economy does not live in their bubble. See, we are the cattle. This is where the economy derives from. This is where the tax dollars are pulled from to feed into their bubble. You've got a few who do not govern for they govern, they rule over the masses. No longer do they govern for. They don't care what you want. They don't care that 70% of the people want the border wall, which is a half an hour south of me. They don't care. They'll use the news media outlets to tell you that only 30% of the people that want the border wall. But yet even the Mexicans here in Tucson want the border wall. I'm in Tucson, folks. They want the border wall. You'll never know that. You barely even knew that Tijuana was tired of these freaking migrants. You barely knew, knew that. And the only reason why you probably knew it is because one news station outlet leaked it and the others felt, well, our ratings are slipping for the day. We need to report it. That's pretty much what happened. I need more coffee. <laughs> Ah, oh, yeah. It's funny in the morning when you're all groggy and you get that good first cup of coffee, you feel that energy rip over you and it's just amazing. Let me read a couple of comments, say hello to a few people. 
Why you're all at now at work, man? I don't know. What is this? Oh, it's a um, Sig Sauer P229 in 40. You ever have a gun pointed at you, folks? That's what it looks like. And this is what they call a bikini holster. I don't know if I really like the bikini holster anymore. I used to. And one of these days, I might trade it out. Yes, it has the uh, night sights on it. Now, I know it's loaded, but my fingers are not on the trigger. Those are uh, tritium night sights. They'll glow. There are low dosage of, of uh, uranium, to be honest with you. That's what it is. And they'll glow right in the night. No, I'm not going to shoot myself for your viewing pleasure. Good morning, folks. Thank you so much for being here. You know I love the news, don't you? Mateo D. Fior here in the house. And we got the big bank, little bank. John Wright, Doug Larrabee. There are a few names actually here that are from my nighttime chat. Robert Clark on Lord Humongous. Thank you so much for wishing me a, uh, a vacation. Happy vacation. I plan on leaving here maybe in the next hour or so. Soon as uh, the Honey Bay Cam shop opens up and I can go by there and get my uh, my holiday meal, Robert Clark and James Dorman got 160. I mean, I'm sorry, 960 ounces. Awesome. And if I'm reading this correctly, Lord Humongous has 185. Awesome. Well, now he's saying he has 5K. So I'm a little confused. Um, Sin Coy, the wall is on. Trump did it. You know, did he? Because I kind of got a, a mixed signal last night. It says that they approved it with like $5.7 billion mixed in with the spending bill, but then it has to pass this, the Senate. So I'm a little confused what's going on with the law. Um, Juan Stacaplata, good morning. Don't call me, sir. I am just an average guy. I don't deserve that kind of respect. But thank you so much for being that way. Bitcoin guy. Hi, guys from the hills of Europe. Um, Chad Roberts, thank you again. Wake up and smell the coffee. I am. Alejandro Duncel, I haven't seen you in a long, long time. I thought you abandoned me. I don't, I didn't know where you went, but thank you so much for being here again. Um, organic flat earth prepper. Finally got a live chat. Yes, sir. Uh, or ma'am. I can't tell what you are. Um, but normally my live chats are about 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock at night, Tucson time. And uh, I have a day off. I felt like doing it early before I left town. Bread and Gatorade. Finally got you live. Yes. Thank you so much. Ram, Ram, Shad, Shand, Rag, Hoonan, Dan. Wow, that's a that's a difficult for me to say. Good job. The Dems are wicked and want power. Yeah, they. It's not about money anymore. The Dems don't. Everybody thinks, oh, they just want our money. No, they don't. They want power. And what is power? Power is control. What is the ultimate control? To own a slave. That think about it. How much more power can you have? They look at us as future slaves. Get to work. Give us your money so we can live in our multiple homes. In communities that have beautiful walls around them. In communities that we purposely price out of your ability to move in. Elu Diaz, good morning. 
Faith Hunter. Good morning to you, Sans Pure, and uh, boycott Greece until they change their border policies. Uh, you know what? That kind of reminded me of something. Boycott Greece until they change their open border policies. Kind of reminded me of, um, for some reason, of Trump pulling out of Syria. Now, a lot of people, well, according to the propaganda news, are, 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 are this is the craziest thing we've ever heard. It's, it's bringing this country down to, 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 to first of all, uh, I don't see it in the streets. The, the country's not falling apart like the news media outlets are saying. We should be out of, I'm tired of being the police of the world. When you help somebody, the person that you help, many times or not becomes, um, they become lazy. They, oh, you, oh you, you're helping us? Oh, you, you can do it? Okay. It's time for Syria to start defending itself. Why are we why are we paying our tax dollars to help countries pull out, let them help themselves for a while? It's just like raising a child. You got to push them in the water and hopefully they'll swim. You know, they can't swim, you go in and you pull them out. They got to learn on their own and they're get, they're all getting lazy. Uh, we don't need to be paying our money, our tax dollars need to fix this country first before we go and fix other countries. Let them, let them live, let them fail. And part of failing, I mean, it's like growing up. We all need to make our mistakes in order to learn from our mistakes. But if we're there, <coughs> we're doing it for them. They'll never learn a damn thing. Brent in the house, Merry Christmas to you. It's funny how I just go off on tyrants. I do apologize, but it's the way my brain works. Um, I can't wait to see the Brexit deal. I hope they do exit the union. And uh, we'll all see what lies and propaganda there was surrounding this. The world is not going to fall apart because, how do I know this? The world was not apart before. Brexit occurred before, you know, the two countries got together and formed one. The two countries, got, before the two countries got together and formed one, there was no economic collapse. There was no fire falling from the skies. They did it to become stronger. It didn't work out for them. They're just going to go back the way it was. But yet the news media outlets will tell you fire will be falling from the skies. Get out and vote against it. Who else is in the house? May I get a thumbs up, please? It's not like I'm asking to borrow your car keys. It's not that like I'm asking to borrow a $20 bill. It's not even like I'm asking to take your wife on a date. All I'm asking is for a lousy thumbs up. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, give me a thumbs up. John Wright in the house. Jersey gal. Thank you. Love the New Jersey folks. Anybody from the East Coast, I love. Paul Dyke, Philosopher Bees. Cobra Iceman, hi from France. Hello from France. We're hearing some news about the yellow vest. I hope things are going well in your country. Um, just remember to keep fighting for your freedom. Don't lay down. Fight for your freedom. And don't be taken in by the serpent tongue of the snake. And the serpent tongue of the snake is normally the one who's promising you free stuff. John Turner in the house, slightly stacked. Good morning, everyone, and Merry Christmas. I love Christmas times. I really do. Um, I purposely also keep off the music, um, the Christmas music, all the way until my last day at work. You know that? Um, there's a station here in Tucson, actually two stations here in Tucson that have been playing 24 hours Christmas music since uh, Thanksgiving, 24 hours, no other music. I purposely don't listen to those two stations up until the day, my last day of work for the season, which is today. So I'll get in the car, I'll jam some Christmas music, makes me in the mood, you know what I mean? 
get up there, go see my wife, and have a good time. We are trying to fight, but police crashing us. Let's see Saturday. You know, it goes to show, you got to understand this, police crashing us. That, that verb. Got to understand something. These police are also parents and children. Uh, and children of parents who might be inflicted by the pains of government. But it goes to show you that people who make money and people who are in dire need of money will do anything, including lie, to save their jobs. And that goes for the news media outlets. They're well overpaid. Imagine making millions of dollars a year on contracts. <coughs> You sign a contract to be on CNN for a year for like 1.5 million. I never dreamed of making 1.5 million. Chances are they've never dreamt of it and they're making 1.5 million, 2 million. Oh, hell yeah. I'll tell the people <laughs> anything you tell me to tell them. That's what's going on, folks. <coughs> Thank you, Negan. I appreciate it. Danny. Do, do I got to try this? Do Koviak? Do, do Koviak? I can't pronounce it. There's that J in there that throws me off. Police are brainwashed and will do anything to keep their paychecks. Exactly. They're in dire need. They're in debt. They know they that they're everybody, including the police, are one paycheck away from losing their home. So everybody's lying to everybody. And I always say the prices of everything are controlled. They're controlled to control us. See if the prices were at their normal state. We would have less control over us. But isn't it amazing that out of all the stores, prices are all the same. We complain about the news media outlets and the hundreds of news channels reciting the same words. I mean, literally the same verbiage. But have you ever noticed that the news media outlets, my camera just fogged up. Have you ever noticed that the news media outlets are not the only ones? You go to the stores, you go to department stores, everything the same exact price down to the penny. Isn't it amazing? It's control, folks. They control us into with money as well, not just information with money. See, money is freedom. Think about that. Without money, you have to go to work. The less money you have, the more you have to go to work. And the opposite goes the other way. The more money you have, the freer you are. And I do mean freedom. There was a philosopher who said that a better slave is a slave who does not know he is a slave. A more productive slave is a slave who does not know they are a slave. We're slaves. When they come and take 35% of your paycheck before you even touch your paycheck, you're a slave. And then after you get your paycheck, all the taxes you still continue to pay through the duration until next payday, you're paying 55, 60% taxes. And just because it's not listed as a tax, you're still paying it because a regulation is a tax. Regulation fees, this fee, that fee. Oh, you want to build onto your home? You got to pay that to get approval to build onto your home. Well, I thought it was my home. No, you, you still got to, yeah, we got to tell you, you know, it's safe, you know, make sure you're doing it right. So they control us with money as well, folks. And, um, I don't know how I started this rant, or but it's what it is. Uh, the best thing to do is just not be into debt. You're not going to be able to control the prices of everything out there. Just limit your debt, and you'll be as free as you can possibly be without being rich. <laughs> That's why I also love this. I put out a video. It must have been a year ago. And it was it was basically a psychological experiment on my half. Because I know money equals freedom. 
I asked, if you want a million dollars, what would you do with it? You had a lot of people who said they would give it um, to others and help. And that was good. I would say 25% of the people said they would give the money to other people and help other people. That's good. <laughs> you know, I, 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 and I question now those other people that you done helped, would they squander it and live like freaking pigs and get themselves back into debt? Yet another, the bulk of the people, you know what they said they would do? And I, I, I thought this was idiotic. They said they would reinvest it. I'd invest it in the stock market. Some said I'd go to Vegas. See, to me, stock market is like going to Vegas. Eventually, the house always wins. And you're a loser again. If I won a million dollars, yeah, I would help my immediate family might help that random guy or gal that's standing outside a restaurant too hungry to go in. I would not donate it to any charitable cause because they are thieves. The bulk of the money goes to administration fees. See, that's what they do. And they get a slight fraction to where it's supposed to go. They're scams. They're thieves. I would not invest it in the stock market. Chance of losing it back to where I started from. I'd live like a freaking king for the rest of my life. And I would attempt to get all my other family members helped out for the rest of their lives too. And if I run out of money, at least I live, lived like a king for a little while. I wouldn't squander it. I wouldn't buy 15 homes. I'd maybe buy two homes. Say I'm a skier. I'd probably buy one small home in Colorado, one small home in New York. My wife and I talked about it. We would, if we won the multi-million dollar lottery, we wouldn't freaking own a three, four thousand, hundred thousand dollar home. Oh hell no. We don't want to be sticking out like a sore thumb. We want to blend in and enjoy our lives. It's not a lot of money, Cheryl, I understand, but it was a metaphor. The $1 million is a metaphor. Silver Leprechaun in the house. Thank you so much. Sebastian. Boy, I haven't broke 100 this morning. Not even 100 people this morning. Must not be doing a very good job this morning. People maybe just want to talk about silver. All right, let's talk about silver. They don't want to hear about nothing other than silver. I always tell people, why do I talk about the news? People always bitching at me. Why do you talk about the news? Because I always tell people this. We're preppers. We're silver stackers, which is another form of prepping. We're gun-toting, Bible-fearing people. Why? We're preppers. Bottom line is we're preppers. And we have to know, when I speak about the news, it's not because I want to speak about the news. It's because we got to know why we're prepping. We got to know what's coming in order to know what to prepare. That's the only reason why, folks. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. This is one of my favorite coins. I have to cup the thing because it has a hard time focusing. It's a very official looking coin. I've got to move it a couple of times to get it in. Very official. 0.999 Army coin, U.S. Army. Now the camera's actually going to project that uh, in reverse. Let me get this out. And the flip side of it is, it, this is a coin of the Army because everybody, I love the Army. I went in as a little child. And um, when I say a little child, I was like 17 years old. That's still a child. And to me, the um, the army is very dear to me. So, army coin here, a full ounce. Um, here's another coin that I showed previous. This is a two ounce coin. You can see the edge. It's a two ounce coin. I'm trying to get it to focus, and that is a map of the United States. 
You see Florida in possibly your lower left. Let's see if I can straighten it out. And the mountains and the Nevadas and everything on your right-hand side. Now, the flip side of this coin, again, I've already shown it to you, but I'm going to show it again. By the way, this is concave. I can't tell if you could see that. It's a concave coin, meaning it goes in. It's dish. So let me see if I can show it to you again so you can capture that. It's a beautiful coin. I was having a hard time focusing. Let me pull it back. You can see the concave and the flip side. Statue of Liberty. God bless America. Make America great again. Now, this is an MS graded Silver Eagle. This is an MS 69 graded coin. It's my first and only graded coin. And yes, when you compare it to another Silver Eagle, I'm pulling it out, they are different as far as texture wise. One is much nicer than the other. When you, you could see the detail and everything, I mean, you see the lines right there. I mean, one coin has just definitely got a lot of beautiful texture to it. Look, very clean, very clean looking coin. What else? Most of my silver is actually up in the White Mountains. I got a 30 year anniversary, 30 year anniversary maple leaf. It's probably focusing on the plastic bag. Mm. And somebody had gifted me a couple of um, fractional bars from, um, these are Rembrandt's. Trying to get it to focus. A little bar and a little half ounce, looks like. Little stuff like that. Silver Hoddle Itchottle in the house, Cheryl H. Beautiful cappuccino machine in the background. Thank you so much. That's an ECM Technica 4 Profi. Um, it's what I make all my coffee in the morning with. You like that mug, folks? Look at the size of this thing. Obviously, it's dirty from my last cup of coffee. But evil villains. That's what is ruling over us. Beans and rice market is crashing. I told you it would be. It's going to crash. And I got a feeling they're orchestrating it to make Trump look bad. They do not want him in for the second term. And they're going to do everything in their powers. And then they'll use the news media outlets, who's part of the propaganda machine. They'll use the late night talk shows, the imbeciles who think they're comedians to regurgitate what everybody's saying, it's Trump's fault, it's Trump's fault, it's Trump's fault. See, we told you, we told you, we told you. They'll do it. And how are they gonna do it? First of all, Trump has no, zero power over raising of interest rates. A lot of people do not know the Federal Reserve is not part of the federal government. Just happens to have the name Federal Reserve on it. Trump cannot control that. They can raise interest rates and literally crash many markets. One market being the housing market. Well, how does how does that occur? How, 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 how can raising the interest rates crash the uh, crash the housing market? Well, for those folks who just got laid off, and there's a lot of people who are getting laid off, they're forced to either lose their homes or attempt to sell them first. Now you got a, a home buyer who has a budget. They would like to spend $1,500 a month on mortgage. They've gone and they've done the paperwork. This is what we can afford monthly mortgage. Interest rates just raised. That home that we were looking at is no longer $1,500. It's 1750 now. Can't afford that house. We need to go find something cheaper in a nappier neighborhood. 
Therefore, the people who are trying to sell homes, who are desperate to get out of their homes, cannot sell their homes. The buyers cannot buy the homes. Who again makes out like a bandit? The bankers, because then they can come in. Bankruptcy, you can't, oh, you got laid off? That's not our fault. Your company went out of business. GM fucked you up the ass. Sorry, not our fault. You're behind in your mortgage by six months now. The house is ours. I realize you've been, been paying on your house for five years, six years, but no, you cannot get that money back. The house is ours and the money is ours. Goodbye. Have a good day. That's how your world works. Trump, everybody, and I, I'm reading a lot of um, statements, so I'm tired of Trump. He's not keeping his word. He said that damn wall will be built. He, he, did, he let me down. These imbeciles do not know how the government works. Trump can, can ask for something. If the House doesn't pass it, it doesn't get up to the Senate. And if that doesn't pass either, it doesn't get passed. Trump can just not whip out a pen and say, build the wall. No president can do that. Oh, whoa, whoa. He, he had a full, he had control of the house. He had Republicans. He, he, he controlled the house. No, he didn't. They were Republicans by name. You think freaking for one second McCain was a Republican? He was only a Republican by name. The Republicans that we have in the House, they're freaking communist. They ran as Republicans to steal your country. You can call them what you want. Democrat, Republican, they're freaking communist. I'm not saying all the Republicans are. But enough are liars and really communists. Just enough to, to stop his votes from going through. That wall went up for a vote last night in the House. I think it was eight or nine Republicans voted against the wall. You tell me those eight or nine Republicans are conservatives. See, it's not the amount of Republicans you have in the House or have in the Senate. It is about how many of those Republicans are really Republicans. It's all it is, folks. Just because they're Republicans doesn't mean they're conservatives. But, but I'm not bashing all the Republicans because some of them did hold true. But we need to find out who those eight or nine were who voted against the wall. And we need to freaking vote them out of office. Yeah, sex addicts in the house. Yeah, and they're using your tax dollars to pay off the people they molested. Oh, I know it's your money that we're using to pay off the people we molested. I realize it's your money, but you cannot know who we're paying off. You cannot know how much of that is going to be to pay off. Sorry, it's confidential, oh, but it's your money. It's amazing how they always use your money. Why are they not using their own bank account to pay off the people they accosted? It's amazing. You are a slave. Slavery never ended. It was perfected. Silver Leprechaun. I'm reading some uh, blurbs here that Silver Le there's something wrong with Silver Leprechaun. I'm trying to catch up now. I've seen it a couple of times. I'm black. It's not nice to call it nappy or neighborhood, but it's your channel. You can say whatever you want. Say you downgraded your content with that unnecessary slur. What do you mean unnecessary slur? What does it have to do with black? First of all, Cheryl, Cheryl, what, 
I, I am so tired of being called a racist. We're not allowed to use half our language because it's going to offend another nationality or another culture. What does Napier neighborhood have to do with blacks? See, you're the one who inserted the word black. I didn't. Fact of the matter is, all nationalities have the capacity of living in Napier neighborhoods, not just black people. You don't own the problems of the world. Fact of the matter is, I used to live in a Napier neighborhood. I can call it whatever the hell I want. I was born in Brooklyn, raised in the Bronx. I know what Napier neighborhoods are. And I was raised in the Bronx a long time. I don't... It, I don't need to explain what Napier means. You already know what Napier means. It means a shittier neighborhood, a crappier neighborhood. You know what it is. Don't try to box me in a corner. I'm sorry you're black and you're 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 just looking for shit to say, hey, oh, you you offended my culture. I'm not trying to offend your culture, lady. Take a walk. I, I don't like that race card. Don't like that race card because nobody's playing the race card here. You try to defend your weakness. By accusing everybody else of being a racist. Oh, I'm not good at my job. You're firing me? You're a racist. Oh, you don't like this about me? You're a racist. Oh, you're right about the wall. But I don't like that. So you're a racist. Oh, you don't like that Mexicans are stealing all your jobs? You're a racist. I don't play the racist card, folks. Nap your neighborhood. I'll use that. Na I got somebody here that didn't like the, that I used the word nap your neighborhood. And then, and then they equated it to being a black thing. How, how do you connect nappier with black? Can I use shit? Shittier neighborhood? Would that have made you happy? I'm not saying you're weak, but come on. Stop using the race word, that the race card for every little thing that offends you. We're not trying to offend you. We're all on the same team. And it's mentality like that that divides us. And we wind up arguing and fighting each other than instead of fighting the people who are really trying to divide us. You wasted three, four minutes of everybody's time because you associated the word nappy with black. I never even mentioned black. You did. So who is the racist? Certainly ain't me. You use the word black. You used the word race card. Yes, you did. And uh, You didn't use the word race card. You played the race card by, by inserting the word black. Yeah, everything's a, just add water. I didn't know nappy was a racist word. And I'm white and I have lived in a nappy neighborhood. But I've worked harder and moved into a nicer neighborhood. Both black and white neighborhoods. That had nothing to do with you, you. You made a mistake and you won't even own up to it. Cheryl, if you would say, you know what? You're right. I'd, I'd shut my mouth and move on. But you, you, you don't want to be correct. You want to be right. And there's a difference between being right and correct. You'll fight to the death to be right. I'm right. I'm right. But you can care less about being correct. Go away. Call me some racist. I was born in Brooklyn, raised in the Bronx. I lived around, played with all kinds of Puerto Ricans and blacks. Nathan Morat Moretti. I apologize. First of all, if I ever uh, mention your name incorrectly, it's not purposefully. It means I have a hard time pronouncing it. Nathan Moretti. Moretti. Thank you so much, Ken Bronke. Uh, we the people. She's trying to shame you. Of course. Uh, doesn't look. See, when somebody, when you are making good common sense. They cannot counter it back with good common sense ideas. And you see this on television. You see this during political campaigns. Instead, they'll bash you. They'll shame you. 
because they don't have anything to counter your idea. You say two and two equals four. Well, why is that? And the, and the, and the smart person can say as well, you got two here and two there. When you add them all up, it's four. The, the Democrat retard can't counter that idea. Now, obviously, this is a metaphor. Can't counter it. And we'll say to the people, don't listen to him. He's stupid. He's this. He's that. And, and we found out that he's hiring uh, illegal aliens to mow his yard. And, blah, 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 blah. and they just they shame you. They bash you. They're looking for anything. He blinked wrong. That's code. That's code for racism and, and white supremacists. He blinked wrong. Yeah, it's code for white supremacists. But folks, we need to stop. Honestly, I know I'm being an idiot right now, but we need to stop fighting each other. We're all going to say things that might be a slightly discolored, but it's part, that's part of communicating like real human beings. We're not politicians where we go to Harvard and Yale and learn to talk like an aristocrat and everything's so proper and politically correct. Those are your biggest thieves. Those are your biggest evil people. We need to stop fighting each other and pay attention to what's really going on. Not, not get all diaper rashed over the word nappy. Because that's what's destroying your lives. That's what's taken away. I'm pointing at my television, by the way. That is what is ruining your children's lives. We're all on the same team. Every one of us, even Cheryl. I know I went hard on her, but I'm trying to make a point. Even she is on our team. We need to stop fighting each other. This is all done by design. People are watching the television. They're learning. Oh, that word, that word is a racist word? Oh, okay. Now every time I hear it, I'm going to accuse that person of being a racist. And they spend their entire lives freaking calling everybody a damn racist. Everybody's a damn racist. I love my black people, I love my white people, and I love all colors. The bottom line is I love good people. And if you're an asshole, loser, I don't love you, regardless of color. I don't give a damn. And if I don't like you, it doesn't have anything to do with your race. It's just I just don't like you. <coughs> Brainwashed propaganda from the television. Again, I'm pointing over at my television. Bam. Yart Tozy, thank you for so much for being here. Ken Brock, I'm all worked up now and I need some more coffee. Ken Bronte, people needing people are the luckiest people in the world. All right, this guy's quoting Barbara Streisand. Oh my God, he's so gay. I'm teasing. Even like my gay people. Not that way though. Oh my God, he's so gay. <laughs> now I'll get a bunch of freaking, you don't like gays, you're a freaking anti-Semitic Jew hating. <coughs> I'm trying to see, uh, I'm trying to read some of the comments here. Um, Where's Paul? Nathan, that's awesome. That's Paul Dyche. Somebody was responding to a Paul. But anyway, I guess it's irrelevant. Uh, have you invested in other precious metals other than gold and silver? That's a good question, Mario. No, I haven't. Um, first of all, I believe in the Bible. I believe in God. Um, but I also, historically, you can look up people and find out about them. Uh, historically, you can look up somebody and find out where they're coming from, and you can get a projection of where they're going to. My point with silver is silver and gold are in the Old Testament of the Bible. Now, my, I don't see the dollar bill in the Bible. I don't see 401ks. I don't see a lot of stuff in the Bible. This has a track record, I guess, is what I was trying to make a point out. Silver and gold has a track record, and it has not disappeared off this planet since its discovery. Um, the only other precious metal I stack is lead. And that's just to protect that. Lead.
you know, when I'm leaning over like this and just reading some of the comments. No, 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 no. Do not make a lot of money running a YouTube channel. <laughs> okay. You better, you got to be man enough to pull the trigger. Having guns and ammo doesn't make you ready. It's true. Absolutely true. Dennis the Menace, white is a color. Actually, technically, you're wrong. White is the absence of color. Look it up. Where did I get that army coin? Well, I was fortunate enough to be gifted with it. Somebody sent it to my PO box. Um, one of the subscribers here on YouTube uh, sent it. Um, and um, it's one of my favorite coins. It really is. White is not the presence of all colors, because if you were to uh, mix all colors, you would get a very dark color, like black. And that is not a racial term. I mean, combine a bunch of colors of paints. The more colors you mix in, if they're equal amounts, will become black. It's a true statement. It's irrelevant though. I mean, it's irrelevant. It's a waste of, it's a waste of argument. It's, it serves no, adds no value to the conversation. I have a penny from 1970. Yes, far as uh, Ken Braun, so my sister, before Obama got elected, She's like, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not voting for Trump. He, 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 he said, never said it. He, he's gonna, you know, uh, dissolve gay marriage. He's gonna get rid of gay marriage. I'm not voting for him. But well, two flipping years into it, I always tell her and I laugh at her. Two years into it, he hasn't even mentioned gay marriage. So you were brainwashed from the news. Oh, we can't get Kavanaugh in there. He's gonna immediately ban abortion. I'm still waiting. It just lies and fear. You know what I'm saying? Lies and fear. He's going to do this. Don't vote him in. He's going to do that. Freaking years pass. Hasn't even uttered a word about freaking gay marriage. He don't give a damn about gay marriage, Trump. I always laugh at my sister because they're so freaking they're they're mind controlled really mind controlled <coughs> so i'm against gay marriage too however that's not for me to that is not a battle for me to fight as a battle for god if god determines that he doesn't like it he can deal with it my job, according to the Bible, is to get along with everybody and not judge. So therefore, I don't have a problem with gays. I don't have a problem so much with uh, gay marriage. I keep my mouth shut. I don't judge. Um, I have and get along with gay people at work with no problem. Um, I'll admit it. I have no gay friends. Um, but that's. But even if one knocked on the door right now, and said, hey, can I borrow a cup of sugar? I'd be very respectful, probably get him the sugar. You, you know what I mean? It's not my job to eat. I'm not going to waste my energy, I guess is what I'm trying to say, hating people. There's only one type of person I really have a problem with, and that is um, transgender. 
there is something about that that I have a very hard time not judging. In a Walmart nearby, there is a six foot tall man. Actually, he might even be six foot seven. He's slightly taller than myself. He's transgender now. He's a woman. And he's got long hair, just like straight string hair, partially bald, and he, it looks nasty. It looks gross, the big Adam apple. And I, I really do have a problem with a with a man throwing away his manhood. See, I would imagine that you can be a gay man and still be a man. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes any sense. But here we have a man throwing away his manhood. I, it just it just blows my mind. You know, um, I, I do have a problem with that. I do not. I don't. Uh, could I get along with one if one approached me? Of course, I'm not going to freaking throw down everything and kick his ass. But I want nothing to do with him. Um, I just don't want anything to do with it. Yeah, there was that gay, uh, that uh, not gay. I hate to use the word gay. I apologize. That transgender dude that went up for what is that? The beauty contest. He lost. It lost. Most of them do regret it after a while. Most of them do regret it. Just weird, just sick people. I, you know, it's a sickness. This whole transgender thing's a sickness. Homebrew, thanks for stopping by. I think our conversation is degraded into uh, transgenders. I apologize. You had to wake up so early in the morning to hear that bullshit. Can I get a shout out? No, you can't. Shape shifting freaks. Yeah, that's what it is. All of Hollywood knows trans actor, yeah, actors and actresses are. You know, if I was single, I'd be I really would be afraid just to be single, you know, and just go on, on dates and stuff like that. The mentality of people, just I don't know. We live in a very sick world, absolutely. Bruce Jenner, absolutely. I mean, they and the news media outlet, Cheryl, try to hold him up as a hero. He ain't my freaking hero. He ain't my freaking hero. See, they're replacing people like that. I mean, they're replacing the real heroes. Now, I understand John Wayne has been gone for a long time. But those used to be the people our children would look up to. We had good heroes to look up to, even us as children. They're trying to get rid of that type of person. And they're trying to replace that type of person with this transgender shit. These are your heroes. Oh, hell no, they're not. And I will tell my kids, oh, hell no, they're not. Got to catch a plane? Well... Don't stand in front of it. Walk in success. Got to catch a plane. I hope you're um, going on vacation. I hope it's not a business trip. I hope I'm I'm sincere. Sincere. I hope it's uh, for fun, fun and recreation. Take care. Walk in success. Yeah, my dad is my respect has, has is my hero too. Um, Homer ten seventy five in the house. My dad is also my hero, and I I can go off and and say why. You know, uh, my real dad was a piece of work, and I don't. I'm being very uh, sarcastic. An abusive man. Um, thankfully, he left our lives. The five children also very young. When we were young, real piece of work. My mom met a wonderful man when I was, I don't know, seven years old. That man, what man, what single man would marry a woman with five kids? I sure as shit wouldn't. But this man did. Not only did he marry my mom with five kids, he stuck with her until the day he passed away. He worked hard until the day he passed away. That is my dad. 
not the real dad, just because my real dad, through biological purposes, he ain't my dad. But I hear you, Homer, you and I are on the same page. Dennis, the man, uh, Paul Dyche, who's on th free, uh, thin ice? Me? Am I effing up again? Did I screw up again? Did I piss somebody else off again? It's getting to be a habit. This, uh, Lord Humongous, it'd be funny sitting down with you for a beer. I, I, I got a feeling, though, if you and I were in the same house, you and I'd be wrestling. Uh, <laughs> I'd probably have to go outside and we would probably have to, I don't know, do a fight it out for a minute or two until we got it out of our systems and we come back in the house all buddy buddy. Oh, I would definitely win. <laughs> Women pee and standing up is messy. <laughs> oh, that's gross, actually. <coughs> Paul Dyche, who's on thin ice? I'm I'm waiting for you to respond. Yeah, I, I am a prepper. And um, so our federal government's, enough of the jokes, I guess, uh, federal government is saying that we should collect or stack 14 days worth of food for the next economic collapse. Um, between my wife and I, we have close to a year's worth of food. Um, we also have tools necessary to prepare that food in the event that if electricity goes down, the grid goes down. Um, we also, a year's worth of toilet paper, lots of big lighters. Matter of fact, the Serbian war, when you talk to some of the people there who went through that whole uh, or, or, ordeal, they say the hardest commodity to get a hold of was big lighters. And that was a very valuable tool was big lighters. So we even took their, um, we took their advice and we bought a bunch of big lighters, toilet paper, hygienic stuff. Uh, again, lots of food, uh, manual wheat grinders. I have close to 300 pounds of wheat berries, 300 pounds of just wheat berries, various rices. I have close to about 400, 500 pounds in just rice, various rices, um, freeze dried foods, beans, different lentils uh, I, I got black beans and and um split peas and pinto beans and gosh uh, white navy beans all of them and um we did, got different treats uh as well because you can only eat so much yes i got mountain house foods as well i got uh uh for when you calculate the food required the calories required for each of us, my wife and I, we have approximately two months just alone on Mountain House canned foods. So we get the big cans. And depending on your caloric needs, uh, you can divide it up and figure out how much each can will last. We just on those cans alone, we have um, approximately two months based on two people's requirements. And then obviously you saw it before my Berkey water filter. So I got various water filtration systems in case uh, the water system gets uh, either turned down or polluted. Um, we also around us have various lakes. So I have a water filtration system that literally you can go and take swamp water, pour it in, and it'll come out as good, if not better than the best drinking water, honest to God. Um, and that's called a Berkey water filter system. Um, and you get it with the fluoride filters. Now, I will say something. When you're scooping water out of a swamp, 
it is best to put like a cloth lining on top of it first. You don't want your filters to get clogged up with the bigger particles. You know what I mean? So you obviously will try to pre-filter the water before it goes into any water filtration system. And then you can shake out that piece of cloth and reuse it again. Uh, you can also, uh, before using any water filtration system, you can boil it, let it cool, filter it through a cloth into a Berkey type of filter. So you have multiple avenues to sterilize that water and, and make it taste good. Mikey uh, DYDSS in the house. I saw a bit about storing McDonald's ketchup packets and whatnot. Thoughts on that? Well, I never um, thought about that. Um, and I guess, you know, it depends, I guess. Why not just store the canisters, the bottles of ketchup, unless you're just trying to get the ketchup for free. My concern is the metallic envelope that ketchup is um, is in. Um, and it's just a question. Over time, will that deteriorate? I don't know. I can tell you this, Mikey. I did the same. <laughs> I did the same thing with a bunch of um, preserves. We got a bunch of little packets of real preserves, not jelly, but preserves. And it was great. <laughs> and my wife sat there opening up each one and scooping it into a jar. So I don't know. It, you know, it, who 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 knows? Who knows? You know, uh, if it works, it works. Uh, I guess if you're hungry enough and you, the belly is hitting the spine, you'll eat anything. So, but who knows? Uh, I can say this, though, about ketchup. Um, we, um, through our prepping years, have prepped a lot of stuff puts a lot of stuff on the shelves and a lot of stuff we've actually seen change colors. One of them, which was ketchup. We notice ketchup goes from a beautiful bright red over time to a darker maroon color. Now we tasted that ketchup and I can tell you it doesn't taste any different but that red has got that darker color has something to do with oxidation. So, you know, I would just say, okay, st stock whatever you want on your shelves, but always pull for the front and don't save your preps for the day that the shit hits the fan. Constantly use your preps, constantly use the ketchup and, uh, and, and put a new one in the back. You know what I mean? Um, it mitigates uh, oxidation of some uh, some some stuff and whatnot. One of my worst mistakes. Oh shit! I could tell you a story. What is that log of cheese? Velveeta. This is when I was new to prepping. Oh, I thought to myself, you open up that big log of Velveeta. It's got to be 15 inches long. Uh, that thick. That thick. I love Velveeta mac and cheese, boy. This is gonna be some good preps, honey. Bought some of that. One year, all four bricks, the aluminum broke inside, you know, the aluminum foil, it ruptured and it had cheese dripping down all the shelves. Never, ever, ever store Velveeta cheese. If you guys got away, let me know. I love Velveeta cheese. It's unhealthy as shit. I said unhealthy as shit. Um, but you know, uh, don't, don't hold on to that. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's not cheese. I, I know it's not cheese and folks who know me know, I know my food. It's, it's a processed cheese looking artificial substance probably comes out of the veins of alien predators or something. Never, ever store Velveeta cheese. I learned a lesson. So even I have <laughs> made plenty of mistakes. Hey, but you know what? I'd rather it have ruptured than accidentally have fed that poison to my family. Velveeta. You never heard of Velveeta? Come on. 
You've seen the little Velveeta mac and cheese boxes. I know you have. It's a it's a cheese. I have I have spam. I have lots of spam. And you know what else I have? Um the Vienna sausage in the little round cans. Those those do well. I, I like them. Um are they the healthiest thing for you? No. However, again, in an emergency situation, who cares whether your preps are non-GMO? Who cares whether they have gluten in them? I got all these comments. Well, it's not gluten-free, and, and it's not non-GMO. And, 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 and. People, in an emergency situation, all you're concerned about is consuming calories, getting calories in your body to sustain life. You all want non-GMOs, go ask for help from the next person. Go, go knocking on my door. It's not gluten-free. Oh, boy. I got some canned salmon, too. Um, uh, 1987. I'm just going to call you 1987. I got canned salmon. I actually love salmon. I got a can of ham um, also. I only have one can. It's funny. It's that one uh, Danon brand or Danish brand. It's like a, a weird shaped can. It's fatter on the bottom. And and it basically, it's an oval can, like an egg. It's Danish. I still have it to this day. I've had it on my shelf for like two, three years. I might just as an experiment open it up and eat the damn thing, see if I make a video the next day, <laughs> what condition I'll be in. So... For me, Walmart, uh, a Sam's Club is better for shopping for preps than Costco. That's just my personal opinion. I find more um, of a, um, a more of a choice at a Sam's Club than Costco. In addition, like for example, spam, you can only get it salt free or low salt at Costco. It is my belief that the salt helps its uh, helps it preserve longer. And if I want something to sit on the shelves, excuse me, I want a little bit more salt in it. For example, when you can food, a pressure canner, you want to put some salt in there. It helps the preserve preservation of the food. So I just um, I just love going to Sam's Club for getting mass bulk um, preps. Can I store, can I pour protein powder in a five gallon food grade bucket? Yes and no. Um, so online, you can get food grade Mylar bags. I'm, I gotta do a video on this. Uh, you get the Mylar bags, they're five gallon Mylar bags, so they actually fit in your five gallon buckets. You pour all your protein powders into the bag. And by the way, Costco has an excellent brand um, optimum nutrition. It's, it's like a five pound bag. I can't even hold my hand open that wide. And you can get a couple of bags. And I always, I am a proponent of, of, uh, storing protein powder. Anyway, you can put your protein powder in that bag, seal it up with a couple of oxygen absorbers inside and it'll become airtight bag. Then you put it in a, um, one of like Home Depot's orange five gallon bucket with a lid on it. And that way the mice and the rats and everything can't get to it. Um, why am I a proponent of storm protein powder? Um, as humans, we consume, we consume more protein than we do carbs and sugar for that matter. As a matter of fact, when you take a look at my dinner plate, um, mo most of the weight is consumed by the meat or the, or the chicken and whatnot. And I have some vegetable and I have some rice. Saying that is, what I'm saying is, you're going to go through your protein more. You're going to run out of the beans the first. Your 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 uh, canned meats. You're going to run out of those first. You're going to run out of anything like your pressure canning, all your soups with all the meats. You're going to run out of those first. And you're going to want some protein. And 
uh, some of these protein powders are very good. One scoop in water and you got your protein. Maybe two scoops of protein powder, you got enough protein for the day, depending on your body weight. Again, store, sardines are good. I'm not saying they're not good, but we consume more protein than we do carbs and vegetables. Therefore, mathematically, you're going to run out of protein f first. I definitely store protein powder, and I get the soy isolate protein, not the egg protein or anything like that, although you can. There's no harm in that. Still better than nothing. The soy isolate is uh, just gets dissolved and uh, simulated faster in the body. It's just more pure. It's uh, an isolate protein. Now, I mean, you can get soy. I mean, any protein is better than no protein. Don't I didn't say don't get egg protein. I didn't say don't get soy protein. You get whatever protein you want or what's available. Because any protein, as long as it has all the the amino acid chain, the branches of amino acid in them is a protein. Get what you can get is even shitty protein is better than no protein is all I'm trying to say. And those, um, and optimum nutrition is a higher grade. The one at Costco is a higher grade. It is an isolate. I love Chick-fil-A sandwiches, dude. Sans Pure, I freaking love them. I tell them, though, no pickles. I eat those things. <coughs> They're so good. But like 20 minutes later, I get heartburns. But I, gotta, I love them. That's right, Cheryl. Get what you can get. Um, obviously, always try to get the best. But when you're hungry, who cares? You know what I mean? Who cares if it's GMO or it's not gluten-free or, you know, you got to keep hungry. I mean, you got to keep your belly full, bottom line is. Another favorite place for me to eat fast food. I can't eat fast food much any longer, but Popeye's chicken. All that shit like the heroin, man. Ugh! I take a two-piece all white, extra muffin. Give me that stuff. Wrap a belt around my freaking wrist, pull it tight, eat that freaking chicken. I love Popeye's chicken. Out of all the fast food places, excuse me, I'm like drooling already, salivating me some chicken. Out of all the fast food places, I love Popeye's chicken. That's got to be the pinnacle um, of when I go to go out. I love the spicy all white meat. I love their freaking biscuit and uh, some of their rice and beans. But um, wh where else I like to eat? Well, there's a place called Sauce here in town. I don't know if you guys have that in your place. They do a pretty good job. It's not quite as fast food, but... But I, I don't go into Mickey D's. I, I don't go into Taco Smell. I, I don't go into Jack and the Crack or any of those damn joints. But Popeye's Chicken. I love me Popeye's. Oh, hell no. Kentucky Fried Chicken is like floating garbage in the gutter compared to Popeye's. Kentucky Fried Chicken used to be back in the day, in the 70s, good. It is nasty now. <coughs> and Church's Chicken, that's even worse than Kentucky Fried Chicken. So if you guys have Church's Chicken, church, uh, church's chicken. <laughs> There's a hierarchy. Churches, really close, depending on where you're at. Churches, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and way up here, Popeyes. 
you know what I really miss? And now that we're all on freaking fast food, we're a bunch of freaking hungry people, I guess. Long John Silvers. They don't have a Long John Silvers here in Tucson. I love me some Long John Silvers. Del Taco, slightly better than El Taco, still pretty low gray food. And choking the chicken is best, in my opinion. Yeah, every now and then you got to choke your own chicken. Yeah, I don't even know if Long John Silver even exists anymore. That was some good flipping food. I like Garby's too, but I'll tell you what, uh, we the people, I think that clogged my arteries. I can't do that anymore. Mm -mm -mm. Long John Silver Stacker. Hey, Mikey, there's your second channel right there. Long John Silver Stacker. It's not a bad name. I think that's a pretty cool name. Long John Silver Stacker. I wasn't trying to be funny. I, not a bad. It's catchy. It'll attract people to your channel. I mean, I think part of having a good commercial, uh, you know, good promotion is having a good name, right? Your cart toast, he worked at Arby's. That must have been nasty. This is just a gelatinous piece of fake meat that they're just shaving. It ain't no real meat in that thing. I know it. The cheese ain't real cheese. It's just some powderized cheese sauce. As far as Pizza Hut, that is like raw. See, I'm, I'm, I'm a snob. I'll tell you right now, I'm a food snob. I've had some of the best food in the world living in New York. I know my food now. I lived in New York. Pizza Hut, some of the worst pizza on the planet. Oh, don't get me wrong. When my boss brings in a free pizza for us, I'll have a slice. I regret it 20 minutes later. Heartburns. Got to go to the bathroom real quick. Heartburns, more heartburns. That's some rock gut shit. Pizza Hut. Ken Bronte, New York Pizza's number one. I got a piggyback off of that. New York Pizza is number one. If, there's a caveat, if it is not eaten in Manhattan. Manhattan Pizza is no different than pizza in Arizona. It's no different than pizza in Ohio. It's no different than pizza in Florida. Manhattan Pizza is just commercialized crap. And people always go, I went to New York and I had pizza and I wasn't all that impressed. And I always say, let me guess, you, you never stepped foot out of uh, Manhattan, did you? Well, no, we actually stayed at the uh, the fifth season. That's where we stayed. Yeah, you didn't have real pizza. Silver, you gotta you got to have some of the, yeah, that pizza. I, what am I talking about? Silver Hollow Itchall, you got to go get some Popeye's. Oh, man. And you got to try one of their biscuits and do both because it sounds like you've never been to Popeye's before. So you need to do both the beans and dirty rice. OK, see, normally when you're a pro at at Popeye's. You pick one or the other. I go for the dirt. Uh, I go either one or the other, the dirty rice or the rice and beans. But because it's your first time, you got to do both. Staten Island or Brooklyn? <clears throat> I would imagine pizza in Brooklyn is better. I've never really had pizza in Staten Island. Just got this week's of silver in the mail. That's awesome. Pizza at Ray's blows chunks. Especially Ray's Pizza in Manhattan. Do not get your pizza in Manhattan. It is just commercialized pizza. You go to what they call a pizza parlor. See, New Yorkers know what that word is. Pizza parlor. 
They don't have pizza parlors in Manhattan. Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, even places in New Jersey that are along the Hudson River make excellent pizza. Coinman5000, thank you. And Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. General Matisse, I think he did the right thing by stepping aside. Um, from just what I heard on the propaganda machine, he's stepping aside. He believes Donald Trump should have somebody that is more aligned to his opinions. So I think that was very gentlemanlike and professional to step aside. However, if he can keep his mouth shut, not go on the news and bash Trump now, that are my that's my opinion for now. If he can keep his mouth shut and just go into retirement, fine. But as soon as he gets on and tries to destroy Trump, we really know where he was coming from. And he is, again, one of those Republicans who are not really Republicans. We will see by his actions. So far, I commend the general. So far, I commend him. So Lexus Corn, come. So if I said this in the very beginning of this video. When you help people, the people you are helping become lazy. That's why I don't agree with food stamps for people who are able to work. You feed the animals. They forget how to fend and feed themselves. You go to Syria or any other country and you fight their battles. They forget how to fight for themselves. Why are we paying our taxes? Why are my taxes so high to defend these little pricks around the world? Help them out at first. Teach them how to fight. Come back. It's time now for them to fight for themselves. Boom. No, what you got is a bunch of people on television promoting that the idea that we're going to be doomed. Fire and brimstone is going to come down now because they're going to attack us now because they're going to, they're they're emboldened. Blah 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 blah. No, it's all fear. So the military industrial complex can go back over there and make money. See, that's what it was all about: staying over there and making money. These companies cannot make money now. They don't have their army the u.s army to protect them these these other companies other than the other than the army you had other united states companies over there and they relied on the protection of the united states army now the army's pulling out these 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 companies are like and they're utilizing the news to make trump look bad anyway folks i gotta get going Again, I only have 75 thumbs up. I apologize if I didn't do a good job. But if you haven't given me a thumbs up, please get, do so now. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do so now. I'm going to be driving up in the next hour all the way up to the White Mountains. You're going to probably see a white Christmas. I'll do a, a live feed or something in the middle of the snow and whatnot. Um, thank you very much, Mikey, for stopping by. Um, thank you for thanking me. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> but I need to get on the road. I got a five hour drive. I need to take a shower. I look like, I look like a bum. I need to put, I need to get that thing. Hold on a second. I need to get that thing and, and stock up on another quad shot of latte. I'm just reading some of the last, cause I won't see you guys for a while. A day or two at all. The guy one of us banned. Who is the guy one of us banned? Thank you for the card, card OT. You're quite welcome. You're quite welcome. I'm, I was worried that some of my cards didn't get to where they were supposed to go to. Um, because I, I sometimes will send a thank you out. 
and I actually had a couple of thank yous returned. Um, uh, address, incorrect address, literally, and in, in, uh, you know, or whatnot. And it, it's, it's it's sad. I I don't like getting presents. I feel guilty when I receive a present in the mailbox. I feel guilty about not having the ability to at least. My mom always taught me to say thank you. So I'll send out a card, thank you, or or even get on online and say thank you, whether it be email or, or whatnot. And it, it really sucks is when you get that email back undeliverable or you, you get your letter in the mail back undeliverable. It really sucks because then you think the other person who sent you that you're they think that mail you're just selfish jerk or something, didn't appreciate it. Uh, but anyway, um, if you've never gotten a thank you from me, uh, really, I, I did attempt to thank you and 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 whatnot. Uh, but keep stacking silver. Keep your chin up. Somehow I cut myself right at the end of my finger there. I'll hide that. Keep stacking, folks. Don't let these prices scare you. Um, as far as cryptocurrency, you guys hate me for doing cryptos, uh, but I'm um I'm doing crypto still. Prices are starting to bounce back up. Um, I hope one day to tell you online that hey, it was a success. If I lose, oh well, no worries. So folks, I'll see you tomorrow, possibly from the White Mountains. Take care.